Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine tutorial. This video continues off from another tutorial where I go over how to create a Anime instance class in C++, and as well as recreate the idle slash run events in the event graph of the animation blueprint in the third person template. This video will be in the description below, so if you haven't checked it out yet, please do so, because today we'll be covering the jump animation. To get started, open the project from before, go to the content browser, then the mannequin folder, then the animations folder, and open the animation blueprint that originally came with the template. And then of course, select any tabs that aren't labeled event graph, click an eme graph, and then double click the state machine. So first thing you'll notice here is this transition from idle slash run to jumpstart. So the transition occurs when the player is in the air. As you can see by the name of the variable, once this variable is true, the player will go from idle slash run to starting to jump. So you may be asking, how does this variable get set? Well, if we go to the event graph tab, kind of in the middle here, you'll see a section called set is an air using state machine. And the is an air variable is set to the result of the is falling method, which is called on the actor's movement component. And this gets updated every animation tick. So if we go back to the animation graph, once the character is in the jump start phase, it will enter the jump loop state once the jump start animation has only less than 0.1 seconds remaining. And then the character will stay at the jump loop state until the character is no longer in the air. And then once it's in the jump end state, it'll go back to the idle slash run state once the jump end animation only has less than 0.1 seconds remaining. So now let's go back to the project and open up Visual Studio. Once Visual Studio is open, go to the anime instance header file, and we're just gonna we're just gonna add a new variable here called is in air, and we're gonna make it type pool. And we're gonna add a U property macro, make it edit anywhere, blueprint, read, write, and make the category generic. And then just save that. And then in the anime instance C file, we'll just give it a default value of um, false. It's not in the air. So then save that and then right click your project and then select build once that's finished building go back to unreal engine and now open up the animation blueprint that we made from last time and make sure you're in the anime graph and then double click the state machine now we're just going to create a few states here by right clicking anywhere in the anime graph selecting add state i'm just going to look up jump start here then i'm going to make another state and i'm just going to call this jump loop and then I'm going to make another state and call it jump in. And I'm going to now double click the jump start state and then drag the third person jump underscore start animation here. And I'm just going to left click from here to here. Go back to the state machine, double click the jump loop state. I'm going to drag the jump loop animation and then left click from here to here. Go back to the state machine and I'm going to do the same thing for the jump end state by dragging and dropping the jump end animation and then left clicking from here to here. Go back to the state machine and then left click from idle slash run to jump start and then double click this circle with two arrows going in opposite directions. This is the transition rule so that we can edit it and then right click and then look up is in air. And you'll notice that this is an air variable was just created from our header files, our header in C++ file. So just left click from here to the result node, go back to the state machine. We're gonna make a transition from jump start to jump loop, and then double click this transition rule, and then right click, and then look up time remaining. And you're gonna look up the time remaining ratio function here. So 
But instead of left clicking from this return value to the result, we're just going to left click from the return value to anywhere and then look up less so that we can get the less than operator and then set this value to 0.1 and then left click from here to here. What this is doing is basically the ratio of time remaining left in the jumpstart animation. Once it's less than 0.1, we can now enter the jump loop state. So now we're also going to left click from jump loop to jump end, double click this transition rule, look up the is an air variable after right clicking. And now we're going to left click from here to anywhere in the graph. We're now going to look up not and select the not Boolean operator. And the result of that, we're going to drag from here to the result node. And the point of this is that once the character is no longer in the air, it will enter the jump end state. It's basically the opposite of what we did for the transition rule for the jump start state from going from idle slash run to jump start. So to go to the jump start state, you have to be in the air, but to go to the jump end state, you have to be out of the air. So let's go back to the state machine. Let's do one last transition from jump end to idle slash run. Double click the transition rule, right click anywhere and look up time remaining once again. And now you'll notice that it says third person jump end instead of jump start. Click the ratio one, set, select the return value and then left click from here to anywhere and then look up not. Oh, whoops, not, not. Look up less. And you're going to find the float lesson operator, set this value to 0.1 once again, and then drag the result of this lesson operator to the result node. And once again, what this will do, once the time remaining ratio of the third person jump end animation is less than 0.1, it will enter the idle slash run state. So then save, compile, and then open up Visual Studio. Make sure you're in the Anime Instance C++ file. And the first thing we're going to do is add some more include statements. So I'm just going to add a include statement for my project's character class. So in this case, replication concepts character.h. And then I'm going to add another include statement for the game frameworks character movement component class. And now I'm going to go down to the native update animation method here, and I'm going to go into this if statement here. After the line where I set the speed, I'm just going to create a variable of type a replication concepts character pointer. And I'm just going to call this owning character. And I'm going to set it to the owning actor casted to a replication concepts character. And the reason why we're doing this is because like we saw in the event graph earlier, we need to get the character movement component, but the only way to get the character movement component is if you have a character variable, you can't just do it from a regular actor. So now we're just going to check if that cast succeeded by checking if owning character is not equal to null pointer. And if it's not equal, then we're going to set is an error to the result of owning character calling get character movement calling is falling so what this is doing is we're getting the character movement component from our character and then calling is falling on that and then setting is an error to the result of that method call so just save that and then right click your project and then click build once the project is finished building, go back to Unreal Engine. And one important thing I forgot in the animation blueprint and ours is go to the anime graph, the state machine, and then click on the jump start state, select the third person jump start animation and uncheck this box where it says loop animation. Now go back to the state machine, go to the jump end state and do the same thing for the third person jump end animation. Just uncheck that loop animation box and then save and compile. Let's go back to our game and actually run it now. And if we notice, if we press space and jump, we will pretty much get the same animation from the original blueprint. And it looks just the same. Jump, jump start, jump loop, then jump end. And if we walk off, then we'll also jump as well. So far, 
so good. Lastly, I just want to show how this looks in multiplayer. So by the play button, let's go to the number of players. Let's set that to two. Let's select run dedicated server and select new editor window. So if you see here, the jump animation can be seen by both clients. So it is being replicated. This is again, because in the last video, like I mentioned, the native update animation method occurs on both the server and the client. And since the third person character is set to replicate in its blueprint and the animation blueprint is part of the third person character, um, any changes to it that happen on the server will be replicated. So just like that, we have basically recreated the event graph portion of the animation blueprint that came with the template in C++. So if you guys enjoyed that tutorial, then please like, comment, and subscribe. And the source code will be in the description below as well as all of our other social medias. And as always, have a nice day.